Hi, I'm here with Dottie, and I'm going to read Chapter 4 of Who Was Harriet Tubman? Free at last. Harriet walked through the dark woods. She moved without making a sound. Ben had taught her well. Ben also told her that bloodhounds could not follow a scent through water. So she waded through streams whenever she could. Finally, she came to the house of the Quaker woman. The Quaker woman let her in, but she told Harriet it was not safe for her to stay. Harriet would have to leave that night. The Quaker woman told her what to do next. Harriet was grateful. She wanted to thank the woman, but how? Harriet gave the wedding quilt to her and said goodbye. Harriet had a long trip ahead of her. First, she followed the Chop Tank River in Maryland. When it got light, she hid. When it was dark, she started moving again. The river was 40 miles long and it was only the start of her trip. Slowly, Harriet kept going. When the river ended, she followed a road to Camden, Delaware. She looked for a white house with green shutters. The Quaker woman told her to do this. The woman in the white house was named Eliza Hun. She let Harriet stay with her for three days. She gave her new clothes and food for the trip. Then Harriet set out again. Harriet had become a traveler on the Underground Railroad. I have chills. The Underground Railroad had no tracks or cars, but it had a series of stops, homes or stores of both Quakers <coughs> and abolitionists where runaway slaves could find shelter. The Underground Railroad had its own special, co special code words to trick the slave owners Runaways might be called bundles, parcels, or packages. One bale of cotton might mean one slave. Two small bales might mean that the runaways were children. Slave hunters were everywhere. They got rewards for bringing back runaways. Harriet knew her owner would be looking for her. She used her bandana to cover her scar. The tra she traveled at night. Sometimes she dressed as a man or as a fancy lady with a veil. In these clothes, she was safer. Finally, she re reached Pennsylvania. Here's her. Pennsylvania was a free state. Now Harriet was a free woman. Later, Harriet saw, Harriet said how she felt. I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now that I was free. There was such a glory over everything. The sun came like gold through the trees and over the fields and I felt like I was in heaven. That's her looking amazing. But freedom was not easy. Years later, Harriet said, I was free, but there was no one to welcome me to the land of freedom. I was a stranger in a strange land. It was true. Her home, her family, and her friends were back in Maryland. One day she would go back to get them. Harriet took a job cooking and cleaning in a Philadelphia hotel. She did not like the work, but all the money she earned was hers. And if she truly hated her job, she could leave it. No one could force her to stay. After work, Harriet began to visit the offices of the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee. This was a group of people who helped runaway slaves. 
The men and women there sometimes had news of Harriet's family back home. Harriet learned that her sister Mary and Mary's family were going to be sold. Harriet decided she had to go back to Maryland. Her sister's family needed her. She would bring them north. William Still, William Still was the secretary of the Vigilance Committee and he was her friend. He warned her not to go. It was too dangerous, but she wouldn't listen. A clever plan was devised. Harriet's Quaker friends got the plan to jo John Bowley or Bowley. He was married to Harriet's sister, Mary. John was a free man, although his wife and children were slaves. By the time John got the plan, his family had already been taken to the slave auction. We're gonna have a little blurb about vigilance committees. As more enslaved people escaped from the South, Vigilance committees sprang up in the larger towns and cities of the North, such as New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. These committees, like the one William still worked for, raised money to help the runaways. They gave food, shelter, and money to the runaways, who often arrived with torn, filthy clothes, bare feet, and nowhere to go. The members of the vigilance committees also helped the runaways settle into committees by giving them letters of recommendation and finding jobs for them. Back to the story. But they had not been sold yet. It was lunchtime and the auctioneer was taking a break. Right then, John Bowley walked to the slave pen. In his hand, he held a large white envelope with a message inside. He handed it to the guard. The message said that Mary's owner already had a buyer for her and the children. John was to take Mary and their children to the inn where the auctioneer was having lunch. The message was a trick. It was not from Mary's owner, but the guard did not suspect anything. John took Mary and the children. Quickly they went down the street, but they did not go to the inn to find the auctioneer. They were escaping in the middle of the day. They tried to walk calmly so as not to attract attention. Finally, after what seemed like a long walk, they came to a house with a picket fence. Inside was a Quaker man. He was the one who had written the message. The Quaker took the family up to his attic. Night came. The family crept out and into a wagon. The Quaker man covered them with blankets and drove them to a river. So here's a few pictures. That's the envelope. Them. Isn't this exciting? A fishing boat filled with blankets and food was waiting for them. John sailed the boat up the Chesapeake River to Maryland. He was told to sail toward Baltimore. He had to look for two lights, one blue and one yellow. John sailed all night long. As morning came, he worried. How would he see the lights in the daytime? But he did and guided the boat to them. The white woman was on the shore sitting in a wagon. Who are you? She asked. A friend with friends, John answered for this was the code phrase he had been told to say. The woman greeted him warmly and helped the family into her wagon. 
She covered them with blankets and bags of onions and potatoes. Here's the picture. Next, she drove them to a stable where they got out of the wagon and waited until dark. Then she helped them back into the wagon and drove them to a brick house in Maryland. The white woman knocked on the door and then they all went inside. There was Harriet waiting for him. She had arranged for the boats and for the wagons. Now she was ready to lead them north. John and Mary saw that Harriet had a pistol. She had bought it with the money she earned. Armed with the gun and her knowledge of the swamps, Harriet led her sister's family from, the sta from station to station on the Underground Railroad. They hid during the day and traveled at night. At times they walked, at other times they went by boat or wagon Finally, they arrived safely in Philadelphia. It was the first time Harriet had been a conductor on the Underground Railroad, but it was certainly not the last. 